It's a, a delight to see the place slowly beginning to fill back up. We're on our way to normal, or abnormal, whichever. So first of all, let me say a welcome to those of you who are visiting with us, maybe for the first time. It's a delight to have you here. It's our privilege to be able to welcome you into this house that the Lord has provided for us so that we might lift him up and give him praise. I hope this time is a, it's a blessed time for you, and I want to invite you after the service to linger around afterwards for some refreshments and uh, to meet some of the folks here that make this place such a, a special place. So again, welcome. And same to all of you who are at home watching this morning, either on live stream or later on the recordings. It's a delight to have you be a part of this family. <clears throat> I want to uh, remind you all that uh, we are embarking on what is a, a very difficult process, and that's to develop a photo directory. And uh, we will be, in the coming weeks, asking you to uh, come into the fellowship hall where the big blue background is so that we can take your photograph um, to put into a digital photo directory. And when I say digital, that means that it'll be present on our website but only viewable with a password, so it's secure. So, just to let you know um, that that process is beginning. Also want to remind everybody that uh, tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., there will be a celebration of life service for George Real, one of our founding members who passed away uh, just a few weeks ago. The, the congregation is invited to that, and afterwards, there will uh, be a, a luncheon. Uh, and then the first meal event that we've been able to do for a year and a half. So, part of returning to normal. Um, I've got uh, something I need to share with you that uh, really touched my heart. Um, at our council meeting this past week, um, at the uh, request of the missionaries that we support, Don and Ken Bishop, who uh, are missionaries in Kosovo, she called me and said that they were up against some financial constraints. And sending organizations for missionaries require a threshold of financial commitment before they allow the missionary to go ahead overseas. And Ken and Don were uh, experiencing some challenges. So I came uh, to the council and uh, asked if, if they would be willing to raise our monthly support from 150 to $200. And of course, they all willingly agreed to do that. So I communicated that to Don. And, um, she sent me a thank you. And then the next day, she sent me this. Dear Pastor Don, within hours of receiving your email and sharing it with, with our um, uh, people, we, we received our financial clearance to go to Kosovo. We have witnessed the storehouses of the Lord opened, and we yet again are empowered to serve the people he has called us to. Thank you to Rock of Ages for their vital role in prayer and support that opened these doors. We leave in a matter of days and would covet your prayers to shine brightly his light to all our friends and neighbors in Kosovo. Thank you again and let's stay in touch. I wanted you to share that because when I read this, it was like, you know, our decision I thought was, you know, one more drop in a bucket. But it was the brick that created the load that they are able to pull now. And uh, I just felt that you all should know that, to know that you are making a difference. You all can't go to Kosovo or any other place in the world, but you enable God's frontline work of great commission, going and making disciples of all nations by supporting people like this. So thank you for your generosity. It doesn't surprise me, but I want you to feel as good as I feel about what we uh, are doing here. Um, today is a special day because we, again, for the second time, 
since the pandemic has uh, started to subside, that we get to welcome some new members into our midst this morning. And so I would like to call forward uh, Joe and, and Karen Moffitt, if you would come forward, and Sally Thomas. Now there's two others who were unable to be here this morning. We'll receive them at another time. So if you just kind of like stand uh, in front here and face the congregation. Good. And our president, uh, John Nyes, uh, will assist me now as we welcome you into um, our church. So I am pleased to be able to welcome you all, and I want to thank you for uh, being willing to go through our new member classes for the last couple of weeks. I hope you found that to be useful. And this is just the beginning of what I hope you will find to be a very satisfying relationship uh, with this church. God created his church on earth and entrusted it to us to be nurtured and to be shared. In baptism, he adopted us into his family for eternity. So let me ask you this, will you vow to faithfully attend worship and partake in the Lord's Supper? If so, answer, I will. Each of us has been given unique gifts. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, we are called to use those gifts. Our scriptures call us to share God's blessings with a willing and generous heart. Will you promise to be faithful stewards of all that God has given for the good of the kingdom? If so, answer, I will. I will. In community, God reveals himself in our relationships with one another. Will you participate in the life of this congregation, sharing of yourselves and caring for one another as the family that God has created? If so, answer, I will. Do you embrace the mission of the church to be and help make active disciples of Christ? If so, answer, I do. These people have chosen Rock of Ages to be their church home. They have done so carefully and with a desire to share their gifts an open and generous heart. Will we embrace them as fellow workers of God, fellow members of this community of faith, and receive their gifts with gratitude? If so, answer, we will. We will. We welcome you as members of Rock of Ages Lutheran Church to join with us in proclaiming and worshiping God, hearing his word, sharing his sacrifice, Proclaiming the good news of God in Christ in word and deed, serving all people, and striving for justice and peace on earth. Uh, we also are welcoming Jan Highland. in some fashion.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Please rise as we share our confession with God and with one another. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, uh, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and the Lord. Amen. 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 Most merciful God, we, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ died for our sins. And because he did so, you and I can live a life knowing that we have been freed from sin. No matter what it is we have done, will do, Jesus Christ has paid the price for our sin. And so as a called and ordained minister, it's my privilege to be able to declare to all of us here today, that our sins have been forgiven in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Join in now as we sing our gathering hymn today, Gather Us In. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the of the whole world. 
Almighty and merciful God, we implore you to hear the prayers of your people. We are strong defense against all harm and danger, that we may live and grow in faith and hope. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please have a seat now and let's hear God's holy word. The first reading is from the third chapter of Lamentations, beginning at the 22nd verse, the preface. The Book of Lamentations is one of our most important sources of information about the fall of Jerusalem to the Babylonians in 587 BCE. Though the people admit that God's judgment was just, today's reading declares a fervent trust that God will not leave them forever. The reading. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for one to bear the yoke in youth, to sit alone in silence when the Lord has imposed it, to put one's mouth to the dust. There may yet be hope, to give one's cheek to the smiter and be filled with insults. For the Lord will not reject forever. Although he causes grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the eighth chapter of 2 Corinthians, beginning at the seventh verse. The preface. Paul encourages the Corinthians to honor their commitment to participate in the collection his churches are organizing for the Christians in Jerusalem. He presents Jesus as an example of selfless stewardship and reminds them that Christians have received abundantly so that they can share abundantly. The reading. Now, as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you. So we want you to excel in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty, you might become rich. And in this matter, I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you, who began last year, not only to do something, but even to desire to do something, now finish doing it, so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be for your need, in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, the one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. comes to us from the Gospel writer Mark in the fifth chapter. 
and what happened, but the evil spirits in the form of hogs sprang forth from him and ran out over the cliff and drowned. Do you remember what I've said before, that that was the beginning of Devil Tam? <laughs> also, uh, there's the story in Mark about Jesus calming the storm. We just recently read that. And it was all about the disciples in the boat just overcome with fear when a storm came upon them and Jesus was asleep in the back of the boat and uh, you know they were distressed because he was asleep and weren't paying any attention but he woke up and he calmed the storm and the miracle was that he has the faith he has the ability through his faith in God to calm nature to drive out spirits to calm nature well, in this picture that's up here now, we see uh, depictions of what we just read today in the fifth chapter of Mark. On the le left-hand side, you see uh, a picture of, of Jairus' daughter. And, uh, you know, everybody had given up on her as, as having died. A waste of time. She's gone. But what did Jesus do? Very clearly, he raised her from the dead, and she was well. On the right-hand side, we see a depiction of this woman who had been suffering for a dozen years that no physician could heal. She had gone broke trying to find healing. But in her desperation, she came up upon Jesus in a crowd and felt as though just by touching the hem of his cloak that she would be made well. And she was. And Jesus recognized that somebody had drawn some of his power away and identified the woman and said, your faith has made you well. So these are, are miracle stories that we are very familiar with. And they occur often in Scripture. In each of these parables, Jesus performed something that nobody had ever seen before. Well, what is it that we're seeing that we can take away? What, what is it that we can apply in our lives today? Well, um, this is what we take away. That through the love of Christ, and his care for all people. Love has the power to do three things. To heal, to reconcile, and to redeem. Now, let me expand just a little bit on that. That love has the power to heal. Just the other day, I was reading about some scientific studies that had been done of people who had um, been hospitalized for a lengthy period of time because of the COVID-19 virus. And in the beginning, it looked so severe that they weren't going to come out of it. But the care that was lavished upon that person by the, the, the medical personnel, the, the, the love that was extended towards that person by his loved ones and his church, he was made well. And doctors were kind of speechless, couldn't really fully answer why this happened, because it sure looked at the beginning like he was not going to survive. But they could only attribute it to this love that surrounded him, this love that was first expressed by, by nurses lavishing their care upon him. The second thing that we take away is that love has the power to reconcile, to reconcile. Think of the story of Joseph and his brothers. Remember how that went? He, he was beaten and then he was sold into slavery, into Egypt. If anybody had a reason to, to be vindictive and, and to harbor vengeance, it would have been Joseph. Yet when times got hard for his family, 
Joseph invited them to come to Egypt and he filled the need that they had for food and for shelter and thereby was reconciled to his brothers and his father. He could have wreaked havoc upon them in vengeance for what they did to him. But no, through his love of family, his love of God, they were reconciled. Have you had the experience in your families where there's been somebody who's been on the outside of the family for some period of time, a black sheep, if you will, that um, everybody harbors some kind of resentment, but they can't even describe it anymore because whatever it was was petty and it happened a long time ago. It takes just one person to reach out in love to invite that person back into the family and everybody else recognizes their pettiness and they follow. So love has the power not only to heal us physically, and we've seen evidence, even though it's not scientific evidence, it's kind of evidence that is irrefutable. We've just seen it so many times that people are healed because of love. And we've seen families and friends reconciled as, as a result of love. Now, do you think we have a need for reconciliation in our country right now? It's enormous. The, the divide that exists because of something as transitory as politics has caused people to quit talking to each other, to quit associating with each other. And the irony is, is that some years from now, it's a historical footnote. Yet the relationships that remain will remain all of our lives and need to be made fruitful again through reconciliation. Each and every one of us has a point of view. Each and every one of us has our predilections about such things as politics and religion, everything else. But the thing that unites us, that can never go away, is the fact, and I've said this ad nauseum, we are created in the image of God. Every one of you is a picture of God. That's how I see you. And you are loved unconditionally. There are no conditions by which God doesn't love you. If God loves us unconditionally, and we're created in his image, how can we harbor anything but the desire to be reunited as a community? To use reconciliation to say, you know what? We'll probably never see eye to eye on this, that, or the other thing. But I value you as a child of God. And I want to be your friend. I want to be a member of your family. At the end of the day, I've done funerals. In fact, it wasn't long ago, out at the National Cemetery, for somebody that was not a member of this church, but I was asked to do a service. And when I arrived on scene, one of the sisters came up to me and said, my sister and I haven't spoken in years. I don't even want her here. Can you prevent her from coming to the service? Well, that was a new one for me. And I thought, I don't have the power to do that. She went ahead and went out to the committal site, as did her sister, and you could feel the tension between them. You could see it. You could see it in their brows. They hated each other. I didn't know the reason why. But I changed on the spot my message. And my message was around reconciliation. It was that at a time of saying goodbye to a loved one, regardless of where you were in your relationship with that person, that one person is still central in your lives. And what sense does it make to harbor resentment with, with somebody when, when life is short? At the end of the day, do you want to be known for harboring resentment all your life? 
Or do you want to say, you know what? I was a peacemaker. I was a reconciler. I think that's the more desirable place to be. And then finally, love has the power to redeem. To redeem. And what is the best example we have of that? <laughs> it's Christ's death on the cross. For heaven's sakes, you and I are broken from our birth. We can't help it. It's our nature. We are fallen atoms. It's our original sin. But we have been redeemed. We have been called back into relationship with God by virtue of Christ's death on the cross. We're going to celebrate that. We're going to remember that in just a minute as we, as we come forward and share Christ's body and blood in the communion meal. So it serves as a, as a reminder to us that Christ's love for us has redemptive power. And we should also remember that it has healing power and has reconciliation power. Love, I've said it many times, is the most powerful entity on the face of the earth. I, I wasn't going to do this, but I, I asked permission to do it. At our council meeting this past, or at our Bible study this past week, one of our members, and I said, I'll keep it anonymous, and I said, but I don't think I can. Uh, Fred Blake uh, was at our Bible study, and the lesson was all around um, how it was we take a risk and, and go out into the deep water to do something that we're not comfortable doing. Well, look around you, you got these little stuffed animals around you, and I invited you to take one and take it to somebody that was in need of healing, somebody that you wanted to reach out to, and Fred took a little purple bear. And they had a new neighbor move into their neighborhood, and Fred, I think probably with a, a rapid heartbeat, uh, decided that he was going to take that little bear and go give it to this new neighbor. And he did. And they immediately embraced it. And the husband uh, said, you know, well, thanks. But the wife took it right away. This is my bear. This is my bear. <laughs> when Fred told that story of Bible study, he brought tears to our eyes because it was the perfect illustration of the lesson that we were studying about don't be afraid to step out into the deep water to do something that you're, you're, you're not really wanting to do. Uh, but when you do, the result is something very good that happens. Fred took this, this little seemingly inconsequential stuffed animal that personified the love of this place and the love of God and gave it to somebody who he'd never met, he had no idea would they welcome him. And look what happened, he's got a new friend. And Ian went the next step and invited him to church. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I've been trying to get everybody to do for a long time. And Fred just does it naturally. <laughs> so I had to share that, Fred, forgive me for doing it, but I, I think the congregation um, is enriched by knowing that you did that. These bears serve a purpose. It illustrates God's love, and you were his agent to do it. When I say you motivated me, things that you said about the bear, right? and I might say Satan got himself in saying, if you don't want to. Wonderful, wonderful. Fred, you get the next week's message. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> See, that's that's the risk of stepping out. That's the risk of, of leading with your chin. Uh, something's going to happen, you know, and generally it's going to be something good. It's going to be something good. So I thank you for letting me we share that today because it was uh, beautifully illustrative of how love has this power to heal, redeem, and reconcile. So, let me close by saying, remember I said you're all miracle workers? 
You are because you are created in the image of God and you have Christ within you. We are all little Christs. Think about that. The, you know, the next time you, you, you think about something vindictive about somebody, and I, the, I have to do this all the time driving on the turnpike. <laughs> I have to view the person driving 90 miles an hour that cuts in front of me as a little Christ. <laughs> What am I going to do? You know, I, I can't uh, express my feelings using one of my digits. You know, that, that just won't work. So, you are little Christ because you have within you the love of Christ that was built into you at birth. So think about that. The next time you're standing in line at the grocery store or a restaurant or feel put upon by some rude person, just view them as little Christs. And I think you will find your blood pressure will go down and you will feel a sense of peace. Seriously. I, I, I'm talking to me now, Mirror. Um, <laughs> the bottom line of today's message is that one word love. I've been asked by people over the years. Um, how do you start to understand the Bible? You know, I've tried to read it. It's complicated. I get lost. Um, and I say to them, don't look at it as, as this huge historical work of 1400 century, uh, over 1,400 centuries by 40 authors. Think of it as one word. It's one word. All of those pages are one word. Love. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, if you feel like it, please stand and uh, let's let's join our voices together singing today's message hymn. There is a balm in Gilead.
you will now join me in the Apostles' Creed, our statement of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. And he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for the prayers. Let us come before our triune God in prayer. God of hope, the ministry of our church extends across borders from nearly neighbor, nearby neighbors to far and distant countries. Accompany all those who labor eagerly in service of the gospel that through your good news, all might experience transformation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the air we breathe, the water we drink, the land that provides our food. Guard all species of plants and animals from harsh changes in climate, and empower us to protect all you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Righteous God, we pray for nations and their leaders. Give them a spirit of compassion and steer them towards a fair distribution of resources that none among us would have too much or too little. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing, your touch has the power to make us whole. We pray for those suffering from medical, uh, physical, or mental illness. Embrace those who are sick, especially those on our prayer list. Sandy Barr, Kara McQuay, and all others you say aloud or in your hearts. Surround them with your unwavering presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this assembly and all those gathered together in worship. Revive our spirits, renew our relationships, and rekindle our faith that we might experience resurrection in this community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, send relief from the triple digit heat in our Northwest United States. We also thank you for the rain that has been refreshing our area. Please send some part to parched lands um, out west and in other countries that are wrought with drought. Give hope to farmers and people again. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the faithful ancestors in every age whose lives have pointed us towards you, especially parents grandparents, and all your saints who share the good news of Jesus. Envelop them in your love that we may reunite with one another in the last days. Lord, in your mercy, we lift our prayers to you, O God, <coughs> trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. Amen.
peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. We take this opportunity to thank you for supporting us um, with your um, donations, your offerings, whether it be by check or electronic. Uh, we really are grateful for your faithfulness and support. Thank you.
are the gifts of grace. These are the gifts that represent love and healing and reconciliation. These are the gifts of a creator God who loves us unconditionally. In just a moment, you'll be invited to come forward by the ushers. Please have a seat. Um, we, we are um, in the process of trying to uh, reinstitute the direct uh, distribution of um, communion. And so we've been experimenting around a little bit, and uh, we've created some confusion, but uh, I, think we're, I think we're close to, to leveling it out today. So the way that it will proceed, first of all, let me say to everyone here, no matter what your faith background, no matter what your belief has been, everybody is welcome at this table. This is an open communion table. And you're going to be invited to come forward uh, by section there are two serving stations. The one on your right here will serve that section over here, the right section. This station will serve these two sections. And this is where our confusion had come in before. Today, what we're going to do is do it one section at a time. And we'll begin with the middle section. So you'll be called to the aisle by the usher. You'll come forward. You'll receive a wafer and a cup, either dark liquid, which is wine, light liquid, uh, which is uh, grape juice. You'll consume them both, deposit the empty cup in the bowl, and then re return to your places by the opposite aisle. Uh, like I said, we'll start with the center section and then we'll go to this section. Now, don't feel put upon because we're going to alternate from week to week. <laughs> the last will be first, the first will be last. So next week, you guys go first. I think we're ready. In a moment, you'll be called. <laughs>
resounding the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which you've now received, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. 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 Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a word before we go, I want to thank you again for uh, coming out to worship this morning, especially visitors. It's a delight to have you here. Those of you who are watching at home, thank you for tuning in this morning. We hope this time has been a, a blessing for you. Let me remind you that you are invited to linger in the fellowship hall afterwards uh, for some refreshments. More importantly, to mix and mingle among each other, something that we have missed doing for such a very long time. And now hear these words as we prepare to depart. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Let's leave today singing, O oh Jesus, joy of loving hearts. It's time now for us to go in peace and share the good news. Praise Praise to God. God.